Okay, so we have successfully imported all of our tracks into Pro Tools, all of our audio files. We have uh, cleaned the toms, we have labeled all the tracks, and we have bussed each section of the drum kit into its own auxiliary bus and sent it to the drum bus, which I'll go ahead and recolor by double clicking in this area. Let's make it some kind of, oh, that was a mistake because all of the, uh, all of the um, tracks were selected. So I wanna unselect the tracks and then just do the drums and make that like a orange looking thing. So uh, that's how you change the color of the track. Anyway, so everything's organized. We are there, we're good to go. Nothing is panned, everything is zeroed out as far as volume and we have no inserts for the plugins. Um, if you don't see this stuff, uh, which by this point, it's pretty bad if you don't, but if you don't see the inserts and the sins and everything, um, you, you can find them by clicking on this on this bad boy here, this, this little like column -y looking button with the drop down. Uh, inserts A&E is what we have. We have sins A&E and we have the IO. The IO is really important because that's your inputs, outputs, uh, panning, all that stuff. Okay, so great. So we are all set up to start start mixing now. Um, so let's let's start mixing. You can start with any instrument you want. I generally don't start with overheads or cymbals or hat or snare for that matter. I usually start out with the kick or the toms. Let's start out with the kick because it's the foundation of what we're going to be working on. And real quickly, let's uh, let's check out uh, the finished uh, mix here and see what it's going to sound like. Okay, so so the the kick drum you can hear in the mix. You can hear the click of the kick, like you can hear the clicky, uh, the padded uh, beater, and then you can also hear the the bottom end and the, and the big, bulky, uh, uh, low punch of it. Um, so let's uh, let's let's see what we can do to get that going. First, EQ um, Fab Filter Pro Q is here on the quick list. How do you get to that quick list and tell it what you want it to be? This is good because I want to change it actually because the Pro Q version two came out today from Fab Filter, fantastic EQ, um, and I'm going to change that right now to the Fab Filter Pro Q. So I am in the setup, uh, the preferences, which are a drop down from the setup menu, and I am in the mixing tab of it. And here we are, default EQ, native Fab Filter Pro Q two. And then for default dynamics, I have a multi-band compressor, the Dynamic Spectrum Mapper. It's from Plugin Alliance. You can get that from. It's a, a Paul Frindle designed plugin. Excellent multi-band compressor. It's my go-to multi-band compressor for sure. You can use it for anything. I, we can talk about that some other time. But uh, that's how you can create your default uh, EQ and dynamics there. So let's EQ the kick. Um, we don't need to use the bus for the kick yet. Let's just EQ the actual track the actual kick track. Let's uh, make sure that loop playback is on. And if it's not, if you don't see that little circular thing, you can right click and hit loop, but it is on. So um, make sure I'm also in slip mode here. So if I'm in grid mode, it's gonna lock to that grid, which we're sort of on the grid here, but I don't really wanna lock to the grid right now because I don't wanna cut off any transients of the beginning of hits. I wanna be in slip mode so I don't have to lock. So I'm gonna select a few kicks here and uh, I'm gonna hit play and let's listen to the kick. It's it's soloed right now, so let's take a listen. Uh oh, why can't I hear the kick? Because the kick bus track isn't uh, isn't grayed out, so I'd have to solo that to hear it. But I don't want to have to click two solos, so instead I will command click, and it grays it out. So now anytime I solo anything feeding into it, it's soloed as well. And so while we're there, let's go ahead and do it to the overhead bus. And it looks like the other two buses are good. Okay, great. So let's listen to this kick. Great thing about the Pro Q is it has an analyzer built into it. So you can actually see the frequency of what you're feeding into it right away. Um, another very, very, very cool setting for the Pro Q 2 is that it has auto gain. So if I start boosting the hell out of the high end and it starts peaking in the meter, it'll auto gain it down. Amazing. Okay, so let's go and delete that for now. Let's play the kick and uh, I'm gonna show you what I do for a kick EQ. Okay, um, 
it sounds kind of flabby, you know, nothing really too much going on right now, so I want to bring the low end out a bunch. Yeah, I'm also going to cut the extreme low end because I can't even hear it, I don't need it, I don't want it to clutter up my mix, so I'm going to double click on the end here. And I'm going to turn it into a 96 shelf so it's really, really steep. Alright, I'm also going to boost the clicky part. I kind of like it right there. And then I'm also going to cut the mids. Might add a little too much click. Okay, if I want to uh, tighten the band that I'm doing, I can either use the Q knob here, or I can hover over it and use my scroll wheel. I can tighten or widen the band. Um, it's awesome. Also, the Pro Q, not to be, not to be a marketing machine for the Pro Q, but it's such a great plugin. You can hover over one of your points and uh, hold the headphone, and it'll show you what you're the band where you're listening. It'll play exactly where you're hovering over. So that's what we're getting rid of, what we're cutting, is this sound. Boom. There's the there's a kicky key right there. Boost in the lows, boost in the highs, cutting the mids. Alright, so we've EQ'd our kick. Kick sounds freaking awesome. Next we're going to uh, compress the compress the kick, so let's do that.